أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا واللعن الدائم الأبدي السرمدي على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين آمين رب العالمين we begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praises be to Him. Everlasting and omniscient He is, and we send our peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy household and our everlasting damnation and curses upon their enemies. Ameen. Rabbal Alameen. We congratulate Sahab al Asri wa Zaman, Arwahana lahu al Fida, our awaited Savior, Al Mahdi al Muntadar. On the glorious occasion that marks the birth of a Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra, the Lady of Light, the pure Lady of Light, peace and blessings be upon her, which is celebrated on the 20th of Jumada Athani. And today we have prepared for you a couple of episodes in order to celebrate the birth of Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra. And we thought that the most appropriate way to celebrate the birth of Her Majesty Sayyidah Fatima alayhi afdal salati was salam is to shed light on some of the names of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. I have prepared something and this is the schedule that I have planned for you my dear brothers and sisters, my dearest viewers. And that is the pure names of Fatima alayhi salam. As we know, Fatima alayhi salam has several names. And the names, of course, can be found in our books of tradition, in the reports, the ahadith, of course. But before I reached the name of Fatima, and the name that I wish to focus on, in these episodes is the name Zahra specifically but before I do so I do also wish to shed light upon naming and how important it is that for our children that we give them appropriate names and in order to do so we have to go through a series of steps and answer a series of questions and of course the question first we are to ask is what names are we to to give to our children especially for us living here in the West we find that there seems to be this pressure on the Muslims living in the West this pressure that is constantly being dealt upon the Muslims that they are to adapt to the Western style of living. And then there is of course this Islamophobia that has been prevailing and that has been going around. And people with names like Ahmed and Muhammad and beautiful names such as Fatima and Zahra and Ruqayya and so on and so forth. You find that new parents today, unfortunately, unfortunately, because of fear because of propaganda, because of the media, instead of giving their children these blissful and beautiful names, they are giving them names of either known Western names or names of specific maybe characters or let's say famous actors that they loved when they were young and then they started providing this name or giving this name to their own child. So before we dive in into the narrations from Al-Muhammad the narrations that specifically speak about choosing the appropriate name for one's children, we have to look more into what negative effects may occur, occur when a parent gives a child a name for example that is non-islamic there are several points first things first the individual who chooses to give their child a non-islamic name 
and this name that the parent gives the child may actually have a psychological effect on the child and because of external and internal factors may affect the child's future as well if you give a child a name say of a well-known say famous actor this child may grow up with that name and especially the community around that the community around this child that has been given a specific name may pressure him into following say in the footsteps of that specific actor or character or individual or let's say if you give a child a name that used to be a name of some tyrant or some aggressive evil political leader let's say for example that effect of the name may actually rub on to the child as the child grows up because we we, we know that as a child we are shaped through our families but at the same time our friends and the community that surrounds us plays a very big role in what in shaping who we are as a person the people around you sometimes have a great effect on who you are now imagine if you do not carry an Islamic name or you were not given an Islamic name see there are different ways to look at this if you are born into a Muslim family then the thought behind it is that you should ha should be given a name that at least brings to light that you are a Muslim and especially names like Muhammad and Ahmed and so on and so forth that we will look at into more detail but of course there are people and we're, I'm not here to begin to judge anybody really but I wish I do like love to I do want to say that those who converted to Islam or reverted back to Islam their situation is different of course and I, I have friends today for example that still carry the name that they were given at birth because that's something that you live with that's hard to change especially after 15 20 30 years but at the same time have another name for yourself even if this name is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say for example my name is 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 Michael for example my my name amongst my friends for example in the center or just between myself and my Lord I'll call myself Muhammad that there's no problem at all but my focus today is not on on the names that were given to you uh, that were given to for example the converts and reverts that reverted to Islam but my main focus today is the new parents that wish to choose a Western name over what over a name like Muhammad they wish to choose for example a name like George instead of calling their, their son Ali or a name like Malcolm instead of calling their son Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad so please by all means do not think that I am in any way disrespecting anybody from the community from our from my brothers and sisters that have found the light of Islam alhamdulillah because I really do love seeing these names and then be and by these names I see a very bright future of course especially because the name in the community like I said imagine if you are a revert and you you are in a community that is predominantly non-muslim you will have a great effect on that community especially when that community sees you for example in an act of prayer or from your akhlaq from the way you act with others they see that look when this person became Muslim everything seemed to have changed the way he interacts with his parents now the way he interacts with his friends the way he interacts with his colleagues everything has changed so once again my focus is towards the new parents in this era that by either pressure of society pressure of the environment that they live in pressure or fear that living in the West and in North America or in Europe that having a name like Muhammad or Fatima or any of these beautiful names may have an effect on their children 
my focus is on these new parents today do not by any any means belittle the names of the ahl al-bayt alayhum as-salam and you will see inshallah with the narrations to come how important these names are now let's go back to who we are as muslims living here in the west don't forget that we as muslims living here in the west we should not be influenced by what happens here in the west yes we can take what is good from here but we have to make sure that we shield ourselves from that which does not fall in the islamic principles that which is not part of the islamic culture and teachings there is a term i like to use which is called the islamic identity your islamic identity and one of the first things that makes somebody makes somebody a muslim is the image that they carry and amongst those first things that they carry is the name that they carry and of course the way they act the way they talk the way they speak all of this is considered uh, is, is considered to be the islamic identity now imagine if you slowly start ripping out pieces of this identity from the person you will be left nothing with an empty shell and then this empty shell will then soon be influenced by western ideologies and then soon from an islamic identity you have converted yourself into a western ideology and you have become you have now instead of having an islamic passport you have an a, a western passport and by passport i am talking again about the identity of the person who you are your name the way you speak the way you talk the way you interact with people how you interact with people and so on and so forth hence we can see that one of the most important aspects of your identity living here in the west is your name and all of this inshallah will come to more light as we of course further on look at the narrations of the holy household alayhum as -salam. and the ahl al-bayt the holy household of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has given emphasis on choosing the most appropriate the most blissful the most beautiful names for one's children i mean we notice for example that during the time of jahiliya before the coming of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam in, in the period of jahiliya you would find children you would find parents giving their children names such as harb kalb nimr and so on and so forth I mean names of animals and the reason of course and you you will see after the, the report of Ali ibn Musa Rida alayhi salam in which uh, somebody I have it right here actually for somebody asks the Imam he says to him he says how come the Arabs would give their children names such as Kalb Fahad and Nimr, Kalb meaning dog, Fahad lion, Nimr, and then he said, etc. And then Rida alayhi salam, Imam Ali ibn Musa Rida, he says the Arabs were companions of war. They would use such names in order to instill fear in their enemies. They would also give their slaves names such as Faraj, Mubarak, Maymun, etc., in order to bring forth a good omen. So he says that كانت العرب أصحاب حرب فكانت تحول على العدو بأسماء أولادهم ويسمون عبيد فرج ومبارك وميمون وأشباه وأشباهه هذا يتيمنون بها. So he says they would give, they would also give their slaves names such as فرج مبارك and فرج as in as in Mubarak as in blessed, Faraj as in happiness and so on and so forth in order that they say that with these slaves that we encountered from the war if we give them such names it would pose a good omen towards us it would be almost as in we're doing something good so you can see that during that time that's how people were being named and of course I mean being called war and being called dog is not names that are really much appropriate especially that mankind 
or the human itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human in the best of character and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose man over all other creation. So for you to compare or for you to be given the name of dog, the name of a dog or the name of another animal and when you yourself as a human are more superior to the other mammals then it is only an insult to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now like I said we are going to after we just finished our introduction now what is to follow in the next episodes insha'Allah is that we will begin to look at the reports from the Prophet and from his household which specifically emphasize on choosing the correct name. After that we will look at the narrations in which the Imams السلام, inform their companions to choose names like Muhammad, names like Ali, names like Fatima and Hassan and Hussein and Hamza. I mean, you, if you really wish to dive deeper in our books of fiqh, especially if you go to Wasa'al al-Shia, in the back of the, my mind, I think volume 15, uh, you would find chapters around chapter 21, 23, 24 to the uh, narrations to the point where the Imams السلام, even, even inform us on which names not to choose for our children. For example, they would say f this name and, and this name and this name are names that are considered the names that are, that, are, that are evil that God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angered is, is angry with the one who possesses them. So we do have such detail in our narrations. And of course, I was able to gather what I could and I'm able to deliver what I can in the short amount of time that I have. And then inshallah, after we talk about those names of, of the Al-Muhammad that are recommended for the father and mother to give their children, we will take a closer look again or we will conclude with the name of Fatima alayhi salam which is the name Al-Zahra or Zahra and we will look at how Al-Zahra the name of Fatima Zahra is directly connected with the creation of Fatima alayhi salam and how very important and how heavy this name is and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began the creation of Fatima alayhi salam because we won't be able to discuss of course all the names that pertain to Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam because like we said in our narrations we have so many names Radiya, Mardiya, Mansura, Zahra, Fatima, Batul and so on and so forth we wish to focus on Zahra because this name has very intricate and very it's a very mysterious name. It's a very mysterious name that is directly linked with, with the creation of Fatima as well as the merit of Fatima and the favor of Fatima alayha afdal salati wa salam. Now we are ending, we are nearing the end of our first episode but inshallah like I said we will continue in the next couple of episodes inshallah depending on our time and Next, the next thing we will do is look at the explicit reports that are the commands of Al Muhammad, in which they command their companions and cohorts to give their children blissful and beautiful names. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.